Lieutenant Scott Young with the Lumpen PD. Oh, uh, yeah. I, go ahead, sir. What can I do for you? I just had some questions on uh, SWAT policy. Okay. What, what is, like, the, the typical gear of a SWAT team member? Uh, our typical guy on, a, on an entry is wearing, uh, uh, you know, a Kevlar bullet-resistant vest, a Kevlar helmet, uh, some sort of eye protection, normally just clear glasses. Uh, a lot of the guys wear elbow and knee pads. We wear protective gloves. And generally, on an entry, the guys are armed with uh, an MP5 submachine gun, and a, uh, a handgun as a, as a sidearm. Now, there will be a couple of people along that do not have the long guns. They just have pistols. Right. Like, and normally they're that'd the... Be typical, that'd be typical big entry gear. I mean, there's a lot of little stuff involved, but that's the big visible stuff. Um, wh what typical situations is SWAT used for? Well, and, and, and again, we can't, I can't discuss this particular incident because uh, uh. it's still under review, but in general, SWAT teams exist to handle stuff... Uh, handle situations that are outside the normal patrol capability. That's why SWAT teams exist. So, like an example? Uh, well, an active shooter, a hostage taking, uh, in this case a high-risk uh, search warrant or a high-risk fugitive apprehension. Um, we use SWAT. You know, I did ask for, like, if you have statistics on how often the SWAT team encounters resistance or how often they fire their weapons to compared to be fired upon. Do you have any information on that? Uh, I don't have that off the top of my head. It's very, 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 very. Sure, sure. Well, I'm just going to go through that list. I mean, the next one is two. What is what is policy for SWAT members who fire their weapons on active duty? Um, absolutely. There's an investigation. Any any shot that's fired outside of an intentional training environment uh, gets reviewed. You know, gets investigated, and wh whether it's um, <coughs> Uh, at a dog or at a human, sure, so it's going to be investigated. Uh, are are the officers or SWAT members? Uh, still allowed to be on active duty while those are conducted? It, it would depend on the situation. In, in, um, the, the in the cases in the past where we have had to shoot dogs, no, the officers were stayed on duty, uh, stayed on active duty during the investigation. Now, obviously, in the case of, uh, of uh, shooting at a human, we would put that officer on uh, paid leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Sure. But in, the, in, in this case and in the times in the past when we've shot dogs, um, the officer stayed at work. Okay. Um, well, since we're talking about that, like hypothetically, obviously, like what is the policy for? Like, I'm, I'm sure uh, like a, a human needs to do something aggressive or life-threatening to a officer in order to. Right. But what what is the qualifications yeah. for uh, an animal? Well, the standards are lower because, um, quite frankly, the, you know the odds of dying from a dog attack uh, are relatively slim for a SWAT team member. But the odds of, of uh, significant injury are pretty substantial. And so if, if we're faced with the choice of officer injury or shooting the dog, we're going to shoot the dog. Understand this is not the first dog we've killed? No, I, I, I do understand that, actually. Okay. If you have a, a search warrant on my house, you, you shoot my dog. Is there any accountability for that matter if you found that you didn't have to shoot my dog? Like, uh, how, how do I... That would be a... a possibly a civil issue. I mean, if it's just determined that we were just out and out intentionally cruel, we could be criminally charged with animal cruelty, sure. So again, I mean, just to step back for a minute, you don't, you think that uh, men wearing such such armor and, and gear are, are c can't at least let a dog jump at them before shooting a dog Have as policy? Have you been seen somebody that's been chewed on by a, by a dog that was good at it? I mean, uh, no, but I, I think the, the cases of how many dogs there's there are the out there in the world that could do that. And, and puncturing. Can they puncture Kevlar? We don't have Kevlar boots. We have Kevlar vests and Kevlar helmets. The boots are just leather. Sure, sure. I'm just, I, I mean, to me, it just uh, seems that. Uh, and, that we, uh, and the other thing, quite frankly, is that. Uh, All right. Um, has, 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 the department, has the department or SWAT teams looked into any other alternatives? to deter dogs besides lethal force? Uh, well, there's not much else out there. We have, um, on at least one occasion, we shot one with a less lethal round. Now, the problem with that is that you just can't hit a dog hard enough with a less lethal round every time. Do you feel SWAT team's uh, creation or, or purpose is to stop people from putting something in their bodies that they cho well, so choose? That's, that's a question. Beyond my pay grade, as you are probably well aware, I'm in the executive branch of government. Exactly. The legislative branch decides what people can put in their bodies or not. 
that's not up to us. But I mean, they're as, they're... Long as, as long as our elected representatives have said it's illegal, and as long as our elected representatives have hired us to enforce the laws they've made, then that's how we have to do it. Otherwise, we live in a police state. Nobody wants that. I think it's the actual. I think it's. I think it's the exact opposite. We live in a police state because of that. Sure, but but don't you think you could send a message to uh, lawmakers that you're no longer going to enforce uh, the control of what people want to do with their bodies? Wouldn't that be a powerful statement? But, I mean, when do we start saying enough's enough? When do we stop bashing in people's doors for something that they want to do, continue to do? I mean, even if we arrest a guy on a corner today, you know, somebody else is out there tomorrow. Well, not to a police officer. I understand that, but I also think that police officers are the first line of people to enforce such things, and I think they can make a dramatic change in uh, the way other people look at it by helping and others. I can also just be fired and they'll hire somebody else. Well, sure, but... Because, uh, because again, I, I signed up and I took an oath, and, and uh, the oath I took was to enforce the laws. And even though you might not agree with it? What? Even though you might not agree with it? Is that a difficult... In cases, that's correct. I don't agree with all the law. That's got to be a difficult position to be in. So, and if I have a police officer that comes and just flat out declares to me that hey, there's certain laws he disagrees with that he's not going to enforce, I'm going to fire him. That's unfortunate. I mean, uh... Well, no, it's not. Because do you want to live, do you want to live in a society where the people who enforce the laws are the ones that make the laws? You know, we have this system of checks and balances with the three branches of government. And, I, and I'm a huge constitutionalist. I'm a big believer in the Constitution. And so that's why I'm very comfortable in my role because I know that if I'm the one that makes the laws, I'm also the guy carrying the badge and the handcuffs. And that would be a horrific society to live in. But by the way you say it before, though, uh, sir, uh, sir, uh, it's... Uh, come on. Control of the laws and it, me. It is no different if one branch doesn't check the other branch. You don't challenge back to the laws that are passed to you. You simply do what the people tell you. So it's no different from you or the politician carrying the gun or the badge. Yeah. All righty. Well, I mean, if you if you still could care to review my email and maybe send any other info that you can, that'd be great. Um, no, I, think, I think we're good. I'd appreciate well, it, though. That, and, and it's understandable. I mean, we're the, we're the point guys on it. But, again, if you disagree with the drug laws, it's not so much the drug laws. It's the idea that of self ownership that people own themselves, right, and you don't have the right, sir. That, that's up to our legislature to decide that. I don't think it's. I don't think anybody has the authority over me to decide what I can or can't do. It's like asking permission to put on shoes well, instead of flip flops. And that's a, that's a valid opinion on your part. And, and again, but the people that can fix that for you are the people sitting in Jeff City in Washington. Well, I, I don't grant them that authority, and I, I wish others wouldn't either, but I encourage your your officers and your crew to uh, look into the law enforcement against prohibition and uh, to research victimless crimes and the burden that it puts on this society and realize your role in that. And I'd appreciate that if you guys would reconsider some of the policies and the aggressive nature in which you try to enact them. I mean, it's it's okay. really just obvious, but I appreciate your time and your, your, your time to call me back, sir. Thank you.